Hello, welcome back. My name is Derek Thompson. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of TNT Creative Group. Uh, we are concluding what has been an amazing month this month as we are uh, helping people to develop uh, professional presentations, more specifically their signature presentation. We have Ms. Wendy Gates Corbett here with us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us one last time. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, uh, we will dive right into it. It's been an amazing, amazing month here. Um, today, this week, and today we are talking about how to present yourself with power. So we've gone over how to develop your presentation, but it, it, there's many facets of it. Just like if you are a great presenter, but your slides are awful or you have misspellings or whatever, that's bad. It's also just as important <laughs> to have a, a not only a great presentation, but to present it mm -hmm. the right way. So we're going to kind of finish it off here and help you uh, to present with power. So really happy to have, have you here today. So I, I'm, I'm sure you deal with this all, all the time. And uh, heck, I think we all, those of us who are not professional presenters struggle with this. Um, the balance between just reading mm -hmm. <laughs> what is on the slide versus, you know, what's on the slide being a, a, something that you elaborate mm -hmm. with. Um, can you just talk to us and give us some tips on how to to um, align that and develop your presentation or present in a way to where you're not just sitting there reading and mm -hmm. not looking at your audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my first question is, how do you feel when somebody reads their slides to you? Oh, I, I yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, it, I don't, don't feel good. It's like, it's, like, it's like they're not prepared and they're not engaged That's with right. me. Right. Yeah. In my mind, slides are for the audience. They're not for you, hmm. the presenter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to read that first bullet point. What does that first bullet point yeah. say? So people who read cannot not read. That's right. <laughs> that is my rule. People who can read cannot not read. Right. That means when there's words on the slides, then the audience either has the choice to listen to you or to read on their own. That's and because true. of that rule, they're gonna read, which means they're not gonna pay attention to you. That rule applies to audiences and it also applies to presenters. Just as you said, you, oftentimes presenters are turned around and not looking yes. at the audience, they're yes. reading their own slides. Yes. So the more words that are on the slide, the more the audience and the presenter are gonna read them. Right. So the balance is to get the words off the slides. Okay. There will probably need to be one or two, maybe even three words on a slide. Mm -hmm. But my biggest suggestion is to not use full sentences on slides. Yeah. Use a couple of key words. I see that a lot. Your audience can quickly glance at them and then turn back to you. Right. You can quickly glance at it and, um, and then turn your attention back to your audience. Right. So because of the rule, People who can read cannot not read. I love that. We want as few <laughs> words for everybody to read as possible. Yes. And one of my suggestions is to take those words off the slides and put them in a handout. So many times a presenter says, but my audience needs that information. Right. I want them to be able to go back to it. Yes. That's great. Give it to them. But don't give it to them on slides. Create a handout. That's a Word document. That's where the words go in yeah. a Word document. Yes, yes, well, for sure. Now, again, another thing for those that aren't, you know, professional speakers and I mean, professional speakers may even deal with this. Dealing with those pre-presentation nerves. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any? Well, I, I've heard of some tricks. I don't know if they work. I haven't really tried those. But do you have any uh, uh, tips on how to how, how to deal with that? I do, but I would first ask. Um, what do you do that works for you? Wow. Um, well, you know, I, I just tend to try to calm myself as, as much as possible. Um, if I can get a moment, just a clear moment mm -hmm. before actually presenting, just to mm -hmm. close my eyes and just have a minute, that's what helps me. Um, myself, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm hot natured. So if I get but so worked up, um, you, you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll see it visually <laughs> with myself. So. I have to just kind of, you know, calm myself down and, and, and whatnot. But that's really it. Um, I don't have, and, and well, I guess also I try to be as prepared as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like probably the more prepared you are, the more you know your material, the better you're going to deliver it. 
Um, I would I would personally would start to stammer if I didn't you know have it down packed mm -hmm. or if I didn't rehearse what I was going to go after. So I guess for myself being prepared, uh, number one as much as possible, and then number two just having that moment um, to just kind of try and call myself before starting. Well, those are, are great techniques. I, I ask you what works for you because mm -hmm. whatever does work for you mm -hmm. is, a, is something to keep on doing. Okay. And you hit on my number one tip for, being, for dealing with the pre-presentation anxiety is to prevent it by being prepared. Yeah. And yeah. so my biggest suggestion for minimizing the pre-presentation anxiety is to know your content inside and out. Okay. And by that I mean not just thinking through what you're gonna say and not just looking at the slides, but actually saying out loud, practicing what you're gonna say. Yes. And the more often you can do that, we're actually, when we do that, we're actually creating new pathways in our brain. Mm -hmm. And that's helping our content seep deeper into our own brains, which helps us know our content better. Mm -hmm. So I have a philosophy that we have this much energy in, in our bodies and what's best about, uh, what's more impactful about presenting is when you can give more of your energy to your yes. audience. Yeah. But when we don't know our content, then we are using that brain power and that energy inside our own head. And we are stuck in our head trying to remember what we're supposed to say next and when are we supposed to click. And that energy that we're spending trying to remember what we're gonna say next is energy that we're not devoting to our audience, which means they're not getting our best. So the more prepared we can be, the more energy and um, emotion we can give to our audience. The other thing that I do to help pre-presentation nerves is called power posing. Hmm. Do you know what power posing is? I, I do not. All right, well, I will not make you power pose oh, on okay. camera. All right. <laughs> but I will tell you that I do power pose. Amy Cuddy, is um, a social researcher, a social, social psychologist at the Harvard Business School. And she did an amazing TED Talk mm. on body language. And her major premise was that most of us think about body language and how what we, what we do with our body speaks to others. Mm -hmm. But our bodies also speak to ourselves. Mm. And she explains that there are two primary chemicals in the brain that are related to um, presentations. There's cortisol, which is the um, anxiety chemical. When we get nervous, our brain releases cortisol. Mm -hmm. And then there's the confidence chemical, which is testosterone. When we feel confident, when we feel strong, our brains release testosterone. So she did a study that showed that when, we, when our bodies adopt powerful poses, powerful stances, essentially taking up more room, our brains release testosterone, which chemically, physiologically make us feel more confident. And that means that cortisol isn't being released. So okay. before every presentation, I power pose. Now, it's not something you do in public. And it's not something you do on camera. <laughs> okay. In fact, before this, uh, this discussion, mm -hmm. I went to the restroom. And by, by the way, it's a great place to power pose because okay. There are several different power poses, but one of my favorite poses is this one. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do this in public. <laughs> right. And so I tend to do this in the privacy of a bathroom stall. And okay. if the walls of the stall are pretty low, yeah. this looks pretty funny if somebody <laughs> walks in the restroom. But the walls between the stalls in this office building are perfect because wow. I could stretch my arms wow. and I didn't have to worry about any, anybody seeing me. Hmm. Wow. The so those are some of the ways to, to reduce and deal with pre-presentation anxiety. I, I, I will definitely try that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to have a written blog and actually show some diagrams of the various uh, um, uh, power poses for, okay. for everybody out Great. there. But I, I like that. Now, uh, again, with presenting, um, dress code is something that I'd like to, to, to close out with. Um, are there any tips, uh, things that we should always do, should never do. I, I know that's somewhat of a great area because it will depend upon your audience. Mm -hmm. But um, do you have any guidance that you can give us in terms of um, dressing for presentations? Sure. 
Well, I think it, it does depend on your audience. Mm -hmm. It depends on the type of message that you're delivering. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also depends on you. Like for me, I want to dress in a way that conveys my company's brand. If I'm representing my company, I want to dress appropriately to represent my brand well. Okay. And this is along those lines. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't show up somewhere to speak dressed in flip-flops. Right. So it, it really does depend on the mm -hmm. audience. I would say, um, regardless of, of what I'm wearing, because I tend to gesture a lot, mm -hmm. and particularly with my arms, I look to wear something that is sleeveless, if possible, unless you're using a microphone because <laughs> right. uh, because you need somewhere to, to right. clip the microphone battery pack. Mm -hmm. And I also like wearing um, stuff that's knit, that's stretch, flexible, mm -hmm. so that when I do raise my arms, I don't feel the hunch right. of, of, you know, of re the restriction of a jacket mm -hmm. or of the fabric um, restricting my movement. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, good thing to... To, to think about, um, and again, knowing your your brand, your voice um, plays a certain part. You, know, you have those that are trying to present a certain image to mm -hmm. wear, you know, jeans and a polo, uh, or you right. know, other may fit mm -hmm. their their vibe. You know, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is going to have a totally different appearance exactly. when he presents um, than than you know than mm -hmm. I would or, or others. So yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. you know, kind of staying true to your brand is something that I think we should all. I'll focus on so I like that I think that's important too because if we try to wear something that's not us right that right you know how that feels mm -hmm. when it feels yeah. like a uniform and that's not you and yeah. that that is gonna come out mm -hmm. so the more that's, you that's can right. wear that is true to you that you feel confident in mm -hmm. so you're not worried about whether stuff is tucked in or you know hanging too high or too low mm -hmm. where you can be be confident in how it fits your body mm -hmm. then that frees up the whole anxiety related to how do i look great point great point and i imagine that also uh, needs to lead to our businesses mm -hmm. um you know creating a business and running a business that reflects you know who we truly are mm -hmm. you know don't try to start a business uh just because it's hot the, the the new trend or you think you can make a lot of money staying true to yourself well uh, just like you said with presentations mm -hmm. i think there's a correlation correlation there so uh well uh i sadly have to uh con conclude <laughs> this this has been great um thank you so much for being with us uh the entire month and running the show for two of the weeks and uh it's great um please visit our lunch and learn september 21st uh, here at the office. It's on Thursday, free lunch and, and advice. Uh, we'll also have an in-depth workshop in October. Uh, we will sure be doing much more together. So thank you so much. Uh, we will see you again in the future. Thank you.